All right. Um, that was a good introduction. I'll tell you a little bit more about my background, and I'll go even a little further back than I usually do, simply because I've got a, a past life in the audience with me. When I first got out of college, I was in the hazardous waste business, and one of my oldest friends is here in the audience tonight, Bob Thorpe. Um, I went from hazardous waste into marketing simply because I didn't want to kill anybody. <laughs> I was responsible for filling out paperwork that would have done damage had I done it wrong, and I was to a point where I didn't want to do the paperwork anymore. So I, I got into the back end of marketing and was working in distribution print fulfillment and really noticed a shift happening in the market from the offline to the online. We were working more with personal URLs and um, the one-on-one -on -one marketing pieces where you would have images that were related to people's interests. And so students at, say, U of M who were interested in a program would get a piece of mail that was just directly to them. And that was all data-driven. And most of that data was coming in from online sources. So opportunity just presented itself to me to learn Google AdWords about three years ago. And I jumped on the boat and learned it and mastered it and loved it. And then all of a sudden, here comes social media and the advertising that's part of that. So tonight, we're going to talk about the bare naked truth of Facebook advertising. So a little bit about what is it. This is just a list of what we're going to go through so you get an idea. I'd like to have an overview of what you're, you're getting into within the next hour or so. So what is it? Is it for you? How to do it? And then we'll talk about ads and landing pages and then how you actually go in and analyze the data that comes in. And it's pretty similar data to what you get from AdWords, but I, I think it's a lot better just because of the, the nature of the beast. Okay. So as you've been coming to these meetings, and new members may or may not know this, but last month, Facebook had 560 million unique visitors. There's about 200 to 300 million who are regular users of the site, but this was 560 million unique people one time that came to the site. And it's, it's just getting bigger and bigger. So the opportunities for advertisers, small business owners to have a presence there, it's, it's, getting, it's growing. Um, ganging in popularity among women, primarily 55 and older, that's the largest demographic that's growing. So if you have the business in that demographic, and that's the type of topic um, that, that audience is interested in, you can do very well advertising on Facebook. Um, teens is dropping off. I read a report last week that says teens, the attrition rate is, is about 10% a month. Those that come in, it's, it's a good number, but then there are about 10% of those that are dropping off. And it's simply because the whole mobile applications and they're all getting driven to their little iPhones and other smartphones like that. So a little bit of data for you. Here's some juicy little bits that I enjoyed hearing about. Zuckerberg, in an interview, predicted that there will be 1 billion users on Facebook within the next 12 months. He didn't think he would reach it by the end of 2010, but definitely in the next 12 months, it's going to grow to over a billion users. Um, two years ago, they hired Sheryl Sandberg from Google. Why should you care about this? Because Sheryl Sandberg was responsible for creating and managing the AdWords and AdSense programs for Google. She monetized Google and Facebook stole her. So she's implemented the ad program on Facebook and is putting in the social aspect of it and making it what it is today and what you're going to look at doing on Facebook tomorrow for your advertising. Um, and it's predicted that maybe there's a year left where Facebook advertising is easy and cheap. Ads are approved relatively easy now. No nudity, no drinking, no cigarettes, you know, just basic, no sin stuff. But your copy can be it's pretty loosey-goosey. Um, not so much after a year when more people show an interest in it and more people start participating in it, it's going to be harder because competition is going to be stiffer. All right. All right. So what is it? Facebook advertising was Facebook's friendly way of monetizing their site. Rather than having you pay for usage, which if you saw a post a couple years ago, people were like, I'm not paying to use Facebook. Well, they heard that argument and understood it, but they still needed to monetize it because they have huge overhead. So they implemented the ads and realized with the social nature of the site that getting people to interact with the ads was another way to promote the businesses and to provide um, benefit to advertisers who participated in advertising on their site. Right? It's similar, the, the Facebook AdWords program, 
Facebook advertising program is similar to the display or what used to be called the content network on major search engines. And the content network are those sites such as the New York Times and MarthaStewart.com, those really big sites where you see advertising. They're the display ads with graphics, with videos. Um, it's modeled after that just with images. And it is considered the, the coffee shop. Facebook's the coffee shop to Google's library where Google's got everything indexed and people go there to find things and look at data, um, get real results on research. Facebook people are not going there. They're not looking for anything. They're looking to have a good time. They're having fun. They're exchanging information and sharing with their friends. So it's the coffee shop and Google is the library where you can get your reference materials. This is what it looks like on your profile or other profiles that you visit or the pages that you might visit in, in groups. The ads appear on the right hand side. And I put that in there simply because as I talk about AdWords, people are like, what is it? Where are those ads? What's the geography of it? This is what it is on Facebook. They're only on the right hand side. You do not see them at the top of the page. This quiz, write this URL down at the top, the top line here. I'm going to repeat it again at the end if you don't get it now. It's about a 10 or 12 question quiz that asks you questions such as, do you sell to consumers? Do you promote events? And is your business uh, locally focused? Among some other questions, you get a score immediately at the end of taking this test that tells you what, where you rank and whether or not advertising on Facebook is a good idea for you or not. In addition to that, about two minutes later, you get an email with a full report in your inbox with recommendations and ideas of what you could implement in an ad. Uh, it's, it's a phenomenal offering. And it's, uh, it was put together by the, the Perry Marshall Group, who are the AdWords gurus. And they've, they've now um, cracked the code pretty much on Facebook advertising. So as you're thinking about what your results are from that test. Also think to yourself, does what you offer bring together people who share a common interest? And here are some um, of those common interests that would, are likely to get people's attention. And they're thinking of this not just as what do you have that's going to draw people's attention, but what do you have that if someone's friend likes it, when the friend sees it in that profile, so-and-so likes this, will you like it too? Does it have the stickability. So we're talking about things that are heavily personality driven, very local events such as we just had the Plymouth Art Fair this past weekend and there were ads for that and I saw a lot of people I know liking that and that was coming through a lot. A very locally focused event. Um, education, groups, clubs, areas and uh, offerings like, like this now that we're here, uh, this group that we're here in, the Social Media Michigan group, would do well with publicizing events on Facebook. Because it's, it's something that people have a common interest in social media. People have a common interest in, in food or, or wine or self-improvement or wealth or how to make money. All these things, if you like it, your friends see you like it, they're likely to participate in that page as well. So these are all things that are taken into consideration from Facebook when they're developing the advertising platform on their service. All right. After working in AdWords for three years, I thought the targeting was pretty good. You can choose your keywords. You can do keyword research on it. Nothing compares to the targeting that's available on Facebook. Why? Because everybody in here who has a Facebook profile has filled it with all kinds of personal information. You've listed what you're interested in. You've listed your hobbies. You've listed what kind of family you have. Everything, your movies, your books. Anything that you have an interest in that you might have um, like to see on somebody else's profile. In fact, I have filled my profile with stuff. Oh, I forgot I like that. You know, I love Harry Potter, and I, I forgot to put that in my profile, and I saw that pop up. I was like, so I added it. So I'm always adding things. People are always adding their interests. And as those pools of information grow, the targeting improves. And we'll get into targeting a little bit uh, in, in a little bit. Click costs are a lot lower uh, than they are on AdWords. Competition is not there yet. As I was doing research for this project, I kept flicking, and you're going to see some examples of ads in a little bit, clicking through, clicking through, clicking through, trying to get 
new ads to see. I was seeing the same ads over and over and over again. And thank God they have that option to click because it's not interesting or whatever. You, don't, you can X out and say you don't like this and, and state why. So you're not served those ads anymore. It's, that's another great benefit to advertising because it helps you as an advertiser target the real audience that you're after. So if I'm not interested in an ad anymore, it won't be served to me, so that impression isn't going to do anything to this guy's click-through rate. You understand? So participate in that. Tell Facebook what you do and don't like. It's just going to help improve your experience down the road as to what's being served to you. And the best thing of all, what you're learning tonight, your competitors don't know. So you can just beat the mighty bejesus out of them with your own Facebook advertising, because they're not even there. And if they are there, they're doing it very poorly. So here's some case studies. I've got three. We're going to talk about a case study for a company that sold products. Then we're going to talk about an event, and then we'll talk about services. This case study was for an e-commerce solution. I think they had some kind of um, shopping cart software or something. Their process, the first time they ran Facebook ads, was they set up multiple campaigns and they targeted different markets, which is they, they chose their overall market and then segmented it into different groups. They may have chosen um, businesses that do, I don't know, sell some specific product, but then maybe they segmented into different age groups just because that targeting is available to see which of those age groups responded better to those ads. So that kind of segmenting is another benefit to advertising on Facebook. They used a landing page on their website, and it's the same page that they used successfully in the past on an AdWords campaign, meaning they had a lot of traffic that converted, they opted in, they had really good success with it, so they decided to use it for their Facebook campaigns as well. Um, and it lasted for two weeks. Their results were, they got 5,000 clicks, which is really, really good. 5,000 people said they're interested in what this company has to offer. It cost them 40 cents a click. And on AdWords, it probably would have been upwards of a dollar or two, just be based on competition. They spent a total of $2,000, and they, sent, they sold three products for a total of $2,200, which means they made a $200 profit. They weren't whistling Dixie over that. In fact, they were pretty disappointed about it. Why do you think that it wasn't as successful? Yes, Lana. Good, good point. Good point. Any other ideas? Very good point. Right. You're getting there. You hit it. So they threw up their hands in disgust and gave it a rest for the better part of nine months and reinvestigated it later and went about it with a different strategy, focusing on doing it a little more um, socially. So they went at it to build trust in order to sell the product later. So they created a Facebook fan page, and on that fan page, they advertised to the same market and drove the traffic to the fan page, which wasn't just any old fan page. They had a tab that utilized the Facebook markup lang language, which is FBML, the Facebook uh, term for HTML, which is just the programming. Um, and they, they integrated a web form to collect data and offered something for free in exchange for the information. And then followed up, set, set them in an autoresponder program on a sequence and did that for three weeks, okay? 22,000 clicks at 28 cents a click. They spent $6,500 on it and they had 7,400 opt-ins. 10 days into this campaign, they sent the 4,000 people who had registered up to that point an email offer. They sent it on a Thursday or Friday saying, this weekend only, for this group of people, our, our new Facebook friends, everything on our website is 20% off. They sold $10,000 worth of product. And within that three-week period, they sold another $10,000 for a total of $20,000. So they tripled what they put into it. They put 6,500 into it, and they got 20,000 out of it. So lessons learned were just, number one, start with a lower budget. You, you don't need to throw a bunch of money at it to do some testing. The real key was the mind shift.
to build the trust and keep them on Facebook. They utilize that Facebook tab with the FBML code on it to extract the information and provide something for free, but use the trust that Facebook provides by keeping them there in that environment and not taking them off right away, not taking them to a landing page that wasn't in, in their safe zone. Okay? So people want to be on Facebook. That's where they were. That's where they were distracted from. They don't want to go out someplace on the web to be sold something. Build the trust. Contact them. We talked about this earlier. Do not lose your 47,000 people because you haven't made your database. Get them off of the Facebook through an email marketing campaign because you've collected data while on Facebook. And then the segmenting the campaigns made a big difference too because they were able to get good data back and see what was converting well, what age groups worked, or whatever the segments were that they chose. Okay. An event. This is a, uh, a small wine manufacturer. This is from a company in Italy who during a wine festival wanted to have a private wine party and create a club. And in Italy they have 100,000 people total on Facebook, it's not huge. So they had a very small pool to advertise to. And for this local event, they had started six weeks in advance, sending out um, ads, driving them back again to a, uh, a Facebook fan page that they had filled with blog content. And there's a program called Social Oomph, I think it used to be Tweet Later, Tweet Later is now Social Oomph, where you can programmatically get blog posts, doesn't just have to be your blog post, it can be anybody's blog post, fed into your Facebook fan page. So they were feeding in their blog posts and they were actively blogging to show activity on the site to gain interest, grow the trust, and collect the information. They had another autoresponder web page set up there. Uh, and they started doing the email campaign as well. And this lasted six weeks. They had 1,600 people opt in. That's huge from what the pool was that they had originally to advertise to. They spent 12 and a half cents on each conversion. Now the conversion is the people who actually opted in. Because you've got your impressions, which is what when your ad is shown, your click is when the behavior, the click is, is done. And then the conversion is those who actually take the action that you wanted them to once they come to the page. Okay. They had 300 people show up at the event. That's because at the winery, they were doing some marketing themselves. They brought 50 people in, but the 250 others were from Facebook. So they considered it a screaming success. Services, depending what the service is, um, this happens to be one of our very own members. We have a, a wedding videographer here, Tony. Tony does wedding videography, and he got, um, agreed to be a guinea pig of mine for to be a, a case study for this presentation and our goal was to get more people to fan Tony's page and this lasted about three weeks we had 33 the number has changed since yeah well, okay well, we wanted to drive people to the Facebook page we wanted to get them to like the page so that they could see what kind of work he does and start engaging with him <coughs> so we got 32 new fans each fan cost about 77 cents and we only spent $25 so what this means for your business on a smaller scale is that he, you, would now have 32 new people that you didn't have three weeks ago to engage with, to grow your relationship with, to build trust with. And if you know your list well enough or you know your followers well enough, your small business, you don't have thousands of followers. You might have 100 or 200. You can keep track of who's been with you for how long if you're paying attention to your page and then attach or go after those people nicely one at a time and just start engaging in conversation with them so it can work from big businesses with big budgets to the small guy who doesn't have much of a budget and has a completely different strategy speaking of strategy Janet mentioned go home tonight and start your campaign I want you to go home tonight or even in your car start thinking about these strategies or these pieces of the strategy before you jump right into it Think about who your market is. And then the first thing you do when you get home is take that quiz. Right? Everybody wrote the URL down. Think about what the interests are as they're related to your industry, to your business. What's going to draw them to you? And can they be segmented further, more along the lines of their demographics? 
How old are they? Are they male or female? Can their interests, as it relates to your business, be broken further down? And then what action do you want them to take when they come to your site? Do you just want them to fan your page? Do you want them to fill out a form so you can collect their data? Are you prepared to offer them something in exchange for free? A white paper, a case study, a report of some kind, something to download? Where am I going? Um, and then what will you do with the info? I've had clients collect data for years and never do anything with it. This has to be part of your strategy. You cannot be afraid of the autoresponder. That's a big part of marketing now. I think one of the best strategies that I've seen are those Facebook pages that have the FBML incorporated in them and have the web form there. And they're offering something for free. They're collecting the data. And then they're doing something with it afterwards in the order of an autoresponder sequence program. And I'm one to talk because I'm afraid of my autoresponder program. <laughs> and so what images are, are appropriate? That's the big question because the image in a Facebook ad is so much more important than the content. Because you're, you're, you have to do pattern interrupt with these people. They're, they're on there playing games or they're watching what their kids are doing or they're interacting with their own friends. Uh, maybe working. I spend a lot of time on Facebook because I work on it. It takes a lot to get my attention. So what image in your mind would draw your potential customers away from their activity of fun to engage with your ad and go to your page and participate with you and your <coughs> brand, all right? What's going to distract them? And the next thing is to actually think about the content that you're going to put in the ad, such as offers, benefits, calls to action such as act now or get one now or download this now, anything now today, that kind of you need to do it now before we're out of them, there's only three left, whatever, the reasons to act. All right. So these are things to just start tossing around and considering. And how to do it, how to get started. All the way down to the bottom of your profile is the advertising link. This is one way to find it. So when you click on it, if you don't have an ad already in existence, this is the page that you're going to find. And you'll click Create an Ad. And I'm actually going to go off the PowerPoint now and walk through creating an ad so that you can get a feel for it. I'll go through it the exact same way. Here's the advertising. And then this is what it looks like once you have ads. It's a little mini dashboard with data. You can see the dates that it was changed or updated, the budget and the clicks and impressions, and it goes over to the click-through rate and everything. And then over on the far right is here's my create an ad. So the destination URL, this is the default. Don't ever use this. If I catch you using it, you're in trouble. All right, because this is going to take them off, the, off Facebook. This is if you want them to go to a website. The only time I'm OK with you letting them go to a website is if you're able to replicate what's in your ad exactly on your website. You have to have the same images. Whatever is in your ad, have it on the website you're still not going to get as good a conversion rate simply because that trust factor is going to be broken as soon as you take them off of Facebook. But it's going to be better than if you take them to a landing page that's plastered with your logo and a big, long, yucky sales letter. Okay? So the way to avoid this is I want to advertise something I have on Facebook. Click that. Then anything, any page that you're related to, and I've got a couple of them, um, is going to drop, be in this drop-down menu. So let's pretend that we're going to do an ad for the pay-per-click club, which y'all are going to hear a little bit about later. We're going to say, Master Internet Advertising Now. It's not too creative, but I don't care. OK. So image, this is going to go right to, well, Janik's computer, so this isn't going to be much good. <laughs> But I would choose an image from my database. And images, I mentioned in a slide a few from now about tools. You can go to Google and type in the emotion that you're trying to get. And in the upper left-hand corner on Google, you can click in images. It says images, and it will serve you images that are relevant to the keyword term that you just typed in. So if I wanted 
something like, I think an ad I had was, if you don't succeed with this, I'll eat my laptop. And I found an image of a woman taking a bite out of a laptop. And that's what I used. I thought it was funny. Well, you have to check. They may be copyrighted. It, it, it will say on there, um, they will tell you this may be copyrighted, so get permission or buy it. A lot of iStock photos will come up, especially with what I've been looking for. So you can purchase. Um, just a quick, uh, do you want to upload to Nah, I don't need, I don't need. Thank you, though. I'm more interested in getting to the targeting and how you choose keywords. Oh, no, it'll, it'll fit it for you. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is where the, it gets good. Local businesses, you can choose your city, and then you can set a radius within however many miles, 50, 10, 25, okay? Ages, I'm going to target, say, 22 to 60. And I don't care about gender. Okay, 22 to 70. Well, Greg, you know, you, you look like you're. It only goes to 64. Is the sound pathetic? 64 plus. I remember when it was only 45 plus. Oh, really? Well, they've changed a little, eh? Hey? <laughs> And I don't, I don't care about gender, and I don't care about targeting people on your birthday. But if you have a restaurant, oh yeah, go for it. Okay, I don't care what you're interested in. Relationships, that doesn't do anything with me, but it does for our wedding videographer. Languages, here's one of my favorites. Pirate. <laughs> but we'll stick with US just because. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, well, hi, let me see. What does it, where does it go? Did it go below? Yeah, it closed up on me. Okay, likes and interests. Okay. So, this is the primary area where you're going to choose your keywords and here is a trick okay I want people who are into marketing so it defaults and serves me all of these results here this isn't good enough for me I want more than this I want what we call more long tail terms meaning on a graph that people who search for these kind of terms or are interested in these kind of things are a more finite market so if there's a lot of interest, it starts up here, but as interest wanes, it goes down like this. And so it's these keywords down here that I'm more interested in. They're more finite. So to get that, I type in my primary word, which is marketing, and then I'll just type a letter. And it serves a whole different set of keywords. If you walk out of here with nothing else tonight, I just made you about $10,000. Remember me. All right. And then... <laughs> All right, and then you just go through the alphabet and see what else pops up. And you can fill your list with all kinds of different relevant targeting that you wouldn't have otherwise been able to pull into your campaign. Okay? So then, you fill that right up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can put in, I haven't maxed it out yet. Can you go back and edit campaigns you already have, or do you You can edit them. Yep, yep. So you can choose education level. You can even put in workplaces. So if I wanted to target Petrochem, I could target Petrochem, which is the chemical company I used to work at, and um, get all the people who have that company in their profile. Okay? And then you can move further down into connections. Um, target users who are connected to, it would be any of the groups that or, or uh, pages that I'm associated with. Um, users who are not already connected with those groups pages right yeah you can put anything well no you can't you it has to be something that you have connected to you already yes yes and then friends of connections um, further down now we're going to talk about the pricing actually you know what let me go back over here because what we didn't see because it was off the screen was estimated reach 
So for the, the selections I have right now, there's fewer than 20 people in the United States that have what I chose. So that's a pretty tight group. I mean, it's not big enough for me to waste my time doing an ad for. But the key here is that it shows you how big a pool your ad's going to be shown. And you can go back and add in or take out interests if you want that to be a bigger group. Yes, Marco? No, there's really, it just depends on what the product or service is. For you, I could see it would be wide open. Yeah, because you're targeting the interests. So maybe your budget might limit what you want to do as opposed to the number of people that you want to show it to. All right. Okay, so you can create a new campaign or you can choose an existing campaign to put this ad in. This is where you do that further down the page. You can choose your budget. Um, so you do cho choose a daily budget. They will not exceed your daily budget. And then ad scheduling, the ads run immediately. You can also, on the next page, after you submit this, do a better job of scheduling your ads of when you actually want them to be served. Yes, Greg. Getting higher? Yeah. yeah. And, and, uh, Facebook is getting a lot higher on the number. Yeah. Right. So what he's what he's asking is about the bidding process. It used to be a lot cheaper. Cost is growing, and that's because more people are showing an interest in advertising on Facebook. And the more competition there is, the more opportunity there is for Facebook to make a little bit of money. So cost is is going to go up. Yes. With this, uh, the on that for days, just, just All right. On the next page, you you choose the the scheduling. I mean, and we won't we won't go to that point just because I have more in the presentation to go through. Let's hold the rest of the questions if you don't mind. Okay. Um, so you can choose pay for impressions, and the CPM stands for cost per thousand. So if you only want to pay twenty nine cents for every one thousand times your ad is shown. That's an option. Keep in mind, though, that you're still going to be shown what it cost you per click. So if your ad is shown 10,000 times, you've been, that's 10 times 29 cents at $2.90. If you've only had one click, that's going to cost you $2.90 per click, as opposed to if you stick with 40, 24 cents or whatever it is here per click, then you can gauge it that way. There's no right or wrong. The guy who had the winery did cost the cost per thousand, but the other two we did. Um, cost per click. I mean, um, and as we go into this a little bit more, I'm going to recommend doing multiple ads. I mean, you can still stay within the daily budget that you've set, but play with multiple ads so that you can get a feel for, because you're going to want to segment anyway, so you'll have multiple ads running in the same campaign, but just for different segments of your, your market. Okay? So we walked through designing the ads, putting in the image. We didn't talk about the copy, but I did a little copy demo for you. Targeting your audience by location and demographics, meaning interests and um, personal demographics. Assigning the campaign, pricing, and the scheduling. Okay, here's what I was talking about with the ads. Now, this is busy, and I meant for it to be busy, because imagine someone on Facebook who's engaged with their friends and participating in activities. They're busy doing something. An ad that catches their eye is going to be one of these on here. So as you look at this, I know there are a couple that stand out particularly to you. Make note of what those are and mimic that. Because there are some boring, boring, sting, I love you, boring, boring, boring. I mean, what is this? This? That's just cool. A dog with a mohawk? Are you kidding me? So some of these stand out pretty good. Um, that's what's going to draw attention. That's what's going to get people to disconnect with what they're doing and move on to play with you. They're, you're asking them to leave their sandbox and come into your sandbox. So you better make the offer pretty good. You better make it something interesting and fun and worth their while to leave what they're doing. So here are some examples of FBML pages. Okay, 
Here's the e-zine articles. We talked about e-zine articles earlier. Here's their welcome page. I like it. It's clean. It's simple. There's a very strong, clear call to action here. We want you to like our page. Join us. All right? This is good. Here's another one. Retrievo. This is funny, too. Right? Things to do today. And it gives you a little list. Set realistic goals and achieve them because these are all just goofy. And then like us. Big arrow. Like our page. This was done by a local advertising agency called Visual Impact. I like this one specifically because everything you need is above the fold in this ad. If you notice the easy one, there's more down here. It's great. There's a call to action, a little multimedia going on here. They're going to show me a video. But maybe I don't want to scroll all the way down. I want it all in one chunk. They give it to me here. Visual Impact gives it to me here. Okay, so in a clear call to action, like us with a little arrow going here, they're giving a free white paper and a special offer. This is great. Visual Impact also did this page. This is for lawyers. Another clear call to action, a little finger pointing up. They want you to like the page. They don't even need to say like my page. It's just the imagery that says it for you. A free offer and then a call, call us to schedule an appointment. It's all there. These are staying on Facebook. Right, right. What I didn't see in any of these was the web form. I, on all of the research I did, none of the Facebook pages I had that had FBML had incorporated the, let's say, we a Weber web form in it. All of them that had that took the visitor outside of Facebook. And I think that's pretty funny considering most of them were internet marketing offerings because that's the space I'm in, that's a lot of the ads that I get. How do they not know well enough to stay within Facebook? So I thought that was curious. And I looked a long time because I really wanted to show you an example of an FBML with an incorporated AWeber form. Didn't happen. So um, those are just four good examples. The basic cost, in case you're wondering, anywhere from a couple hundred up to a thousand to two thousand dollars for a really good quality FBML page. Now you can get away without having that, but just keep in mind everything that we've talked about tonight about what your competitors are doing. Be better than them. You know better now. It might cost a little. You can do this instead of a website. You don't need a website. You don't need to pay thousands of dollars for a website anymore. You can use Facebook. You can use it for the same purposes that you have. Although be warned because they can shut you down at any time because it is free. So I don't recommend doing it in lieu of, but in conjunction with. Right? So we talked a little bit about getting images from Google. Be careful, because they might be copyrighted and you can get slapped. And then there is only one keyword tool that I have found, other than what's available on Facebook, that can help you drum up keywords for Facebook. And that is called Cache Keywords. And you can find that at cachekeywords.com. They charge you. you can, they charge you monthly about $67. And I think you can go month to month. I don't know. I checked it out. Good demo. Cachekeywords.com. It helps you discover keywords specifically for Facebook, meaning they'll have, they have an API integrated with Facebook that they have all the data. It's a pretty advanced offering. Watch the demo. Just go on there and watch the demo. It might be worth it for you. It may not. So Janik mentioned a little bit earlier about the metrics on Google. The minimum click-through rate we like to see for AdWords is 1%. And on Facebook, it's 0.1%. So it's a lot different because people are passively being served your ads as opposed to actively searching for what you're offering. So you're going to get a lot more impressions than you are clicks. It's just a completely different mindset. And if, as you embrace that, you will sleep much better at night because people can obsess over their click-through rate and this isn't the place to do it. Just go along for the ride. All right. <laughs> data is available as it is on AdWords programs. They don't have the analytics backing like the Google Analytics program, but they do have some good data coming in, such as your ad performance. There's good stats on that, the demographics, who's clicking, who's staying, who's paying attention, these kind of who's engaging with what's going on in the site, um, responder data, and your conversions, seeing what's happening, who's taking the action that you want them to. 
And that's just a good indicator of what you need to do. If you have traffic coming into your fan page, but they're not doing what you want them to do, then it rests on you. It's back on you to get them to do that, either by changing the artwork, by making the Facebook FBML page more appealing to them, telling them to do what you want them to. People need to be told what to do. Don't leave it up to chance. That call to action means everything. And the ads, are they, they're like little fruit flies. They come in, they do their job, and they die. It's a very fast burn. So pay attention to what's happening with the ads as you're running them, because what happens is the social nature of the ad, people get tired of it, and it'll just crash and burn. It's just the nature of Facebook. It's how they have it set up. So every couple of weeks, really pay attention to what's happening with the traffic, with how many impressions, how many times it's being shown, because as people are not paying attention to it anymore, it will be shown less. All right? So that's just a, a cue to refresh it or create a new ad and run it alongside with the existing ads you have in the campaign. <laughs> so I'm just going to recap what we talked about. We covered what is it, whether or not you should do it, how to do it. We talked about ads, we talked about landing pages, and we talked about tracking. So hopefully you picked up a couple of things. The, the takeaways for the night are these. Facebook advertising is the most targeted advertising available today. All right. Um, when you create your ads, create them to distract. Engage them once they get to your page, but distract them away from what they're doing now because they're not there to play with you. They're there to play with their friends, their games, whatever they're doing. When you do get them taken away from their activity, keep them on Facebook for the trust factor. As soon as you take them away, you're losing a chance of getting the conversion or getting the behavior from them that you want because you've messed up their behavior that they were engaged in at the time. All right. Utilize the FBML. Now learning the code, if you're so inclined, I don't think is that difficult. I think it's just basic HTML um, and integrating a Weber code or any of the other codes that would go along with making the page what you want it to be. Revive the dying ads. Really keep a close watch on what's happening with them so that you can jump in and make the adjustments and change them as you need to. And then monitor the results for those revisions so that you know when your ad is effective and when it's not. Here are some recommended resources for you. As I mentioned, the quiz. Go home tonight and take the quiz and see if this is for you or not. There's a series of videos available called the Fast Track, Facebook Fast Track, and you can find those at bit.ly slash fbvideo1. There's also online training available through Perry Marshall's group, and that is bit.ly FB Fast Track. And if you're so inclined to do live training like we have tonight, I want to introduce you to the Pay Per Click Club, which is launching next month on August 3rd is our first meeting.